Hello there, everyone. This is Vishnu Vijay, a proud fan trammer, and I welcome you all to the live orientation for the Advanced Performance Management paper. So folks, in this particular session, we'll be looking at as to what the APM paper is all about, the syllabus areas that we're about to cover th throughout all our you know, sessions. And we will also be looking at the exam related aspects and how to prepare for the exam as well. So folks, uh, let's get started, shall we? I'm just gonna share my slides real quick. There we go. So folks, what exactly is the advanced performance management paper all about? Well, this is basically an advanced version of the performance management or the PM paper that you had in your skill levels. But what exactly is this paper all about? It's basically all about the performance management within an organization, but the advanced concepts, that's basically all it is. Now, this particular exam or this particular uh, paper has some common topics with the strategic business leader paper, or the SBL paper, which you may have already attended as well. And it also has some advanced topics when it comes to the performance uh, management related concepts. There could be new models, there could be new uh, techniques, new, new uh, mathematical methods that you will have to learn throughout the uh, course of the syllabus uh, so that you can score a wonderful mark in the upcoming APM exam. Now, when it comes to APM, uh, this particular paper is kind of creative, to be honest. Whenever, whenever, uh, whenever you are, you know, tackling uh, a question scenario when it comes to the APM exam, it requires you to provide recommendations through creative thinking as well as, you know, uh, providing innovative recommendations to improve the performances of the organizations. So that is what this particular uh, APM paper requires you to do. Now, uh, more and about that. It creates a, or it develops that managerial skill that you need to have when it comes to making good decisions within an organization as well. So moving on. So when it comes to the APM paper, what all things do you have to learn here? Let's take a look at that, shall we? Now, as you can see here, we have six syllabus areas when it comes to the APM syllabus. Now, what are these? Well, first of all, we have part A, that is strategic planning and control. Now, this is something that you've already learned when, uh, when it comes to the uh, SBL syllabus as well. It's all about the uh, planning conducted by organizations, how they achieve their objectives, what are, the, what are the strategies that they have to implement to achieve that objectives, all those things, and some uh, various other models as well. That is what this particular syllabus area is all about. And then comes the syllabus part B, which is like the most, uh, you know, smallest syllabus area that we have out of all the other five. Now, when it comes to part B, it involves impact of risk and uncertainty on organizational performance. So this is where we learn about what risk is, what uncertainty is, and uh, how can we make decisions if there is a risk or uncertainty uh, within our business environment. So that is basically what we will be focusing on in this particular aspect. And you may see some uh, familiar uh, topics as well, such as uh, maximum and maximax approaches or uh, certain other uh, decision-making techniques when it comes to uncertainties as well, such as simulation models, etc. So all these things are covered under this particular syllabus area. Now, moving on to syllabus part C. So what is syllabus part C all about? It's performance management information systems and developments in technology. And this is like my personal favorite syllabus area as well. Why exactly is that? Because it has all the latest technological updates in the industry. It has, uh, you know, aspects in relation to big data and data analytics. And more and about that, it has uh, various, uh, you know, there are certain things that we you learn about uh, information systems that an organization need to have. Uh, information systems such as there, there are management information systems, there are a certain decision making uh, information systems as well. And more and about that, there are also certain other, uh, you know, uh, modern technologies that has been introduced into our uh, business operations, such as uh, things like RFID or uh, cloud storage systems, etc. So you will learn about all these things when it comes to syllabus part C. So that is basically what syllabus part C is. And it is yet again, comparatively, uh, you know, small syllabus area as well. And it's kind of easy to learn as well. There's not much calculation here. It's just, uh, you know, uh, all the uh, theoretical aspects that you need to know about when it comes to te technological aspects. 
And then we move on to syllabus part D, which is strategic performance measurement. Now, this is where the calculation comes in. Of course, uh, you know, you, you can also find the calculations in, uh, in syllabus part B as well, but uh, a greater deal of calculations, uh, you know, can come up from syllabus part D, strategic performance measurement. Why exactly is that? Because we are measuring the performance of an organization, isn't it? So that's basically the reason. And of course, it has a lot of uh, great uh, topics as well. And then we've come to uh, syllabus part E, which is performance evaluation and corporate failure. Now, this is kind of a really interesting syllabus area. This, uh, it basically enables us to, in, uh, to evaluate as to whether an organization will fail or not, or is it at the risk of failing? Or is it at the, at the risk of uh, liquidation? That's basically something that we're going to learn in this particular syllabus area. And uh, we will also learn about some, uh, some methods as well as techniques that you use in order to uh, predict as to whether the organization is at the risk of failure or not as well. Kind of sounds interesting, isn't it? And, and of course, let me tell you guys, it's an, uh, it's an easy uh, set of techniques as well. So don't worry about that. Now, and then we have one final syllabus here, which was you know, quite recently added, which is employability and technology skills. Now, don't worry about this because this particular syllabus area is something that has been added to each and every ACCL syllabus. What is this? Well, it's basically the uh, skill that you need to have to attend the exam, that's basically it. The knowledge, uh, the basic Excel knowledge or spreadsheet knowledge, the basic uh, you know, uh, knowledge that you need to have to type in your exam in a word processor, that's basically all that is. And we have covered all of these when we practice question in the CBE environment as well. Okay, folks, so don't worry about that as well. It's just a skill that you need to have. And you will obviously develop that particular skill with uh, more and more question practice as well. And as for the rest of the syllabus area, we've covered that throughout the course. So uh, I hope you enjoy uh, learning through those, uh, you know, course material as well. And so a lot of interesting things happening here, isn't it? However, let me just uh, clear out a certain misconception that most people have when it comes to the PM. And as far as I know, it also uh, involves a, uh, a PM paper as well. So a common misconception that people have is that uh, when it comes to the PM or APM paper, they believe that uh, it's more about, you know, calculations and less about theory. Well, that's not actually the case, okay, folks. So when it comes to both these paper, both uh, PM as well as APM, it's like 50% calculations and there are 50% discussions being tested uh, in both these exams, okay, folks. So uh, what I would highly recommend is that you, uh, you know, learn 100% of the syllabus. Don't miss out on any topics. Don't skip any topics. Learn 100% of the syllabus so that you can tackle any and everything that the examiner throws at you in the exam. Okay, folks, so that's basically uh, one misconception that uh, I uh, had to clear at this moment. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. So the key here is to, uh, and this is something that I, you know, communicate with the PM, with my PM students as well. The key when it comes to learning the performance management as well as the advanced performance management paper is to know the meaning behind the numbers. It's not just a mathematical exam, isn't it? As I stated before, it's 50% calculations and 50% discussion of that calculation. Now, if you have to say something about the numbers that you've calculated, then what do you have to do? You have to have an understanding of the meaning behind the numbers, isn't it? So the key when it comes to learning the performance management or the advanced performance management exam is to understand the meaning behind the numbers that you calculated. Okay, folks, so understand why a particular number has been calculated and how can it be useful to improve the performance of an organization? So this particular question should be asked throughout you know various stages uh, of the course as well okay folks so that that can help you understand the syllabus better and that can also help you to uh, you know tackle the questions in a bit more efficient manner as well okay folks so keep this in mind really important point now moving on to the next aspect we've already covered the syllabus and what the syllabus is all about now let's take a look at as to what the exam structure is all about shall we so when it comes to the apm exam we have well, we already know that it's a three hour and 15 minutes exam, isn't it? So we already uh, you know, know that before we even signed up for this particular course, isn't it? So uh, when it comes to the exam, you have two sections, section A and section B. And in section A, we have one 50 mark case study question. Okay, folks, you helped me, right? It's a one 
50 mark question, uh, case study question. Okay, folks, so when it comes to the uh, 50 marks, there's a small bifurcation there as well. Out of these 50 marks, 46 marks are basically technical marks. Now, what do I mean by that? This is basically something that you'll obtain by writing the exam, as simple as that. However, when it comes to the rest of the four marks, now these are just professional marks that you gain. Okay, folks, so keep that in mind as well. So 46 marks are technical marks, whereas the rest of the four marks are professional marks. And of course, we have discussed various methods through which we can uh, you know, score these professional marks easily. And of course, we've also exp uh, explained or we also discussed a lot of exam techniques that you can adopt when it comes to tackling the uh, 50 mark history questions as well, which is kind of interesting. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's actually a skill that you develop through practicing a lot of questions. Okay, folks, so uh, yeah, we've covered all of those throughout our course, course material, so don't worry about that. Now, moving on to the next aspect, that is section B. In section B, we have two 25 mark case study question. Do you have any professional marks here? No, no, really. So uh, the 25 mark question is yet again, uh, you know, uh, uh, this is like the one of the difficult, you know, aspects when it comes to the APM exam, because this is basically the area where anything can be tested. Now, why do I say that? Well, that's basically because when it comes to the 50 mark question, we can, uh, the examiner has provided us with a, a certain hint. Okay, folks, so what he said was the 50 mark question in your APM exam will be tested from syllabus areas A, C, and D. Now, what are A, C, and D? A is strategic planning and control. C is performance management information systems and developments in technology. And D is strategic performance measurements. Okay, folks, so this is something that the examiner has provided us with a hint with. However, when it comes to the 25 mark question, well, it can be tested from any and every uh, syllabus areas or syllabus topics that is covered in the syllabus. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. So that's basically as to what the exam structure, how your exam would be. We have one 50 mark question in section A, which has, for, which, which has four in professional marks included in it. And secondly, in section B, you have two 25 mark question as well, where there is no professional marks books, they're all technical marks. Now, since we know the uh, exam structure of the APM exam, now let's talk about the time allocation, shall we? So what exactly should the time allocation be? Because one of the, uh, when it comes to any exams, be it ACC exams or be it any other professional courses or be it any, uh, you know, even school exams, one of the key things that most students focus on is the time, isn't it? Because we only have a, you know, a limited time slot available to us and we will have to demonstrate the knowledge that we have within that particular given time slot. That's basically what happens in every exam, isn't it? So it's always great that we prepare for that particular set of time. So. How do we prepare for that? Let's take a look, shall we? When it comes to ACC exams, ACC has provided a certain recommendation to plan the timing for this particular exam. What is the recommendation? It's basically 1.8 minutes per mark. Okay, folks. And of course, we'll, we should follow this particular recommendation for each and every questions that we attend as well, isn't it? So let's take a look, shall we? Now, when it comes to uh, the uh, APM exam, uh, there we go. Yeah. So when it comes to the uh, APM exam, we for let's talk about each set of questions one by one, shall we? First of all, we have the 50 mark question. So for the 50 mark question, you should take a total of 1.5 hours, or in other words, one and a half hours to write that particular uh, or to tackle that particular question. Okay, folks, so remember that. Now, how can we plan this time effectively? Because obviously it's a 50 mark question. We may have a lot to read. That's kind of obvious, isn't it? So how can we manage our time effectively or how can we manage this one and a half hours effectively in the exam? Let's talk about that, shall we? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna split the time into two phases when answering a particular question. The first phase is the reading and planning phase. Now, what do we do here? I will get to that. As for the second phase, it's basically where you simply write the answer. That's basically it. Now, let's talk more on about the uh, reading and planning phase, shall we? So when it comes to reading and planning, what does it mean exactly? During reading and planning, what we do is we read the requirement, we read the scenario, and then we 
of course, highlight the important information provided in the scenario. And then we uh, plan our answer. What exactly should the structure of our answer be? Because your answer should be structured in a, uh, in a certain method. Uh, most of the time, when it comes to 50 mark qu uh, questions, most of the time you will have to structure your answer as a report. Okay, folks, and more and about that, you will also have to understand the key points that should be included within your answer as well, isn't it? So this is particularly the time that you take to read the requirement, read the scenario, highlight the important aspect within the scenario, and to plan a structure for your answer. And how much time should you take uh, uh, when it comes to a 50 mark question? You will have to take around 20 minutes in order to read and plan. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. And the rest of the time, that is one hour and 10 minutes, can be taken for writing down your answer. Okay, folks, so that's basically uh, uh, a really impressive strategy that you can adopt when it comes to the exam. And uh, there's a reason why I'm telling you this uh, at the initial stage before you even get started with the syllabus or practicing questions as well. Why is that? Well, that's basically because if you adopt this particular time strategy when practicing questions, it'll be easier for you to you know, uh, become compatible with the strategy during your main exam as well. Okay, folks, that's basically the reason. So when practicing question, use this time strategy and become compatible with it. That's basically something that I would highly recommend as well. Now, moving on to the next aspect, that is a section B question. In section B, we have 25 mark questions, isn't it? So when it comes to a 25 mark question, what you can do is you can uh, allot uh, the timing in this way. Okay, folks, allot seven minutes. Okay, folks, around six to seven or seven to eight minutes to read and plan your particular question. And then uh, the rest of the 38 minutes goes to uh, writing your answer. Okay, folks, so that's basically the time strategy that you can adopt when it comes to a 25 mark question. Now, reading and planning and writing, uh, why have I separated these two things? That's basically because uh, if you are, let's say, uh, let's say that you are not allowing time for reading and planning, you're just going to read through the scenario once again, write your answer, and they, then maybe you will have to go back to the uh, scenario once again, isn't it? So that's basically it, isn't it? So this particular method is kind of inefficient because you're reading something once, you're writing your answer, but you get stuck and you'll have to go back and refer to the scenario once again. Now, this particular aspect is kind of inefficient when it comes to an exam. Okay, folks, which is exactly why we are allotting time to uh, carefully read the scenario and understand what the scenario is all about. Okay, folks, you should only read the scenario once in your exam. Otherwise, it's just a waste of time in the exam, isn't it? And let me, uh, uh, and we all know that, uh, you know, time is really a precious aspect when it comes to any exam, isn't it? So keep this in mind. Okay, folks, follow the time strategy and try to implement the time strategy when practicing questions itself so that you can become compatible with it when it comes to the main exam. Now, moving on to the next aspect. So we've learned about as to what the syllabus of APM is all about. We looked at the exam structure and we also looked at the time allocation for this particular exam as well. So what's the next step? As I promised earlier, we'll be looking at as to how to prepare for the APM exam as well. Okay, folks, so how do we prepare for this exam? So folks, let me tell you that this particular thing is a step-by-step -step process. So what is step one? Step one is basically to learn the syllabus. Okay, folks, we already discussed the syllabus, so we have to learn 100% of that particular syllabus. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. That's kind of a, a, an obvious step, obviously, isn't it? So what else? The second step is to practice your question. Now, when I say practice, I know that it's kind of a really obvious thing. You will have to learn things and you will have to practice question when it comes to any and every ECC paper. But guys, what I want you to understand here is basically this. When you're practicing questions, I don't mean read through the questions and answers. That's not what I mean here. When I say practice questions, I say type your answers in. Okay, folks, that's basically what I mean here. Type your answers in so that you can become compatible with the time strategy. Uh, it, it can be done using either uh, Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel, et cetera, as well, isn't it? So uh, that is what I mean by practice. It's not just about reading through the particular question and answer. It's about reading through the question and typing in your answer in a particular Word file or uh, Excel sheet. Okay, folks, so that's basically what I mean by practice here. So you have to practice as many questions as you 
you can when it comes to the ZIT exam. Okay, folks, because uh, questions can come up from any and every you know topics within the syllabus, so you will have to be ready for everything, isn't it? So, which is exactly why you will have to practice questions as much as you can. Okay, folks, there are various resources available to you. So, uh, and of course, we have created a comprehensive set of uh, questions. Uh, within our uh, or within our revision boot camp as well you can take a look at that and of course more than about that you you have past paper questions okay folks that's basically step three doing the uh, question papers or past paper questions available within the ACC's website okay folks you can take a look at those as well okay folks when uh, another key tip that I would like to provide you here is that Whenever you are practicing question, be it any question, be it the very basic question to the uh, past paper question, when you're practicing any and every question, I want you to keep a note of something that you've learned, uh, you know, when you attended that question. Okay, folks, because when you practice question, there might be some techniques that you might learn. There might be a particular set of wordings that you find to be quite attractive, or there might be a, a specific way in which the answer was structured. So. There are, there are new, new things that you learn when you tackle each and every question. Okay, folks, so what I want you to do is, I want you to note down these things in a, in a particular book so that you can refer to this particular book as part of your revision process as well. Okay, folks, so that's a key thing that you have to you know, cover uh, over, throughout each and every one of these steps. Okay, folks, revision, that's a key and important aspect, isn't it? Because you can, you can just simply learn a particular syllabus, yes. However, maybe after a few days, we're all humans, we might forget a few things here and there, isn't it? So in order to consistently keep memorizing the syllabus, you will have to revise the syllabus on a daily basis if possible. Okay, folks, so that's basically something that I would highly recommend as well. So once you are done with the syllabus, Take about take out maybe an hour or two uh, on a daily basis to revise through everything that you've learned, okay, folks. Even while practicing questions, that's basically something that I would highly recommend when preparing for this particular exam. So you've learned the syllabus, you've practiced questions, you did the past papers, and of course you're revising everything on a daily basis as well, isn't it? So after all of these comes the uh, comes the fourth step. What is the fourth step? And that's basically to attend a mock exam. What is a mock exam? Well, basically this is it. This is an exam uh, standard set of questions which you will be attending under exam conditions. Why exactly are we doing this? Or what is the benefit of doing this? That's kind of obvious as well, isn't it? So uh, it is stated that uh, when, uh, when you're attending a mock exam, your chances of passing increases by 30%. Now, why exactly is that? Because when attending a mock exam, you will be familiar with the exam conditions. Okay, folks, that's basically the primary reason. Because if you're directly attending the uh, you know, main exam, there is a lot of exam pressure and there is a lot of you know, stress and you may not be able to remember things completely during the main exam. So these are all possible situations that can happen within the main exam, isn't it? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna conduct a mock exam with, to help you familiarize with these exam conditions and to let you know what which are the areas that you're strong in and which are the areas that you're weak at or which are your uh, weak areas which you have to uh, which you have room for improvement as well okay folks and how do we do that well basically after attending your mocks the particular answers will be sent to me and i will personally take a look at each and every one of these mock papers uh, mock exam papers and you know provide you will provide you with your individual feedback as well Okay, folks, so that is basically what the mock exam is all about. I will be, I will be providing you with the feedback of what, is, what are the areas of improvement that you may have or what are the uh, uh, things that you need to do in order to tackle this ex exam effectively. I will also provide you with some recommendations as to what needs to be done as well. Okay, folks, so that's basically as to what the mock exam uh, and it's a really uh, crucial step as well. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. And then we move on to the final step that is basically to go rock the exam. Okay, folks, so that's basically the one final step because all, you're already prepared. You learned the syllabus, you practice questions, you pass, uh, practice the past paper questions, you revised everything on a daily basis, and you've attended a mock exam. And that just leaves us with the final thing that is basically to go write the exam, isn't it? So that is how you prepare for your APM exam. Okay, folks, now. There are a few additional things that I like to uh, say here as well. Okay, folks, so when it comes to uh, the question papers or when, when you're doing past papers, there's also one additional resource that we can that you can use uh, to prepare for the exam as well. And this is known as the examiner's report. 
Okay, folks, I'm, I, I don't, I'm not sure how many of you have already heard about this, but we have a, such a resource known as the examiner's report where the examiner provides certain comments on what the strong candidates did and what, this, uh, what the poor candidates did when it comes to that particular exam setting. Okay, folks, and we have a examiner report for the uh, uh, recent exam settings as well. Okay, folks, you can take a look at the ACC website for that. So uh, I would highly suggest that after attending a past paper, I would highly, highly suggest all of you to take a look at the examiner's report relating to that particular exam setting as well. Why do I say that? Well, this is basically so that you can get a better understanding as to what the strong candidates did in the exam or what the examiner expects from you or expects uh, you to write in the exam as well. Okay, folks? So that's another uh, additional key resource that, uh, that would be really helpful when it comes to your exam preparation. So one final thing that I'd like to see when it comes to preparing for your APM exam is basically this. As you can see here, it's a step-by-step -step process, isn't it? How to prepare for this exam is a step-by-step -step process. And let me tell you guys, each and every element of the step-by-step -step process is really important when it comes to uh, clearing your exam. Okay, folks, why do I say that? Well, let me give you an example. You, all, all of you, I believe that all of you already know how to make a maybe a paper plane, isn't it? So you can just, uh, you know, fold the paper on a systematic basis and you'll get a, you know, a paper plane as an end result. So we all know how to create one. We already done that, uh, you know, during our childhood as well, yes. However, what if I miss one of those steps? Of course, we all don't know that in order to create a paper plane, you will have to fold the paper on a step-by-step -step basis, isn't it? But what if I miss that particular, one of that particular steps? What would happen? Will I get the end result that is the paper plane? No, not really, isn't it? So that is exactly the uh, the concept that you have to understand when it comes to the step-by-step -step process as well. Okay, folks, if you miss out on one, you won't get the uh, end result that is a happy phase, you know, after you finish your exam. Okay, folks, so that's basically uh, something that I would highly recommend. Please follow these step-by-step uh, -step process one by one. Do not skip anything. Okay, folks, that's basically uh, a crucial thing that you should uh, understand here. So that's basically how you prepare for this exam. And that was all about the advanced performance management paper. Okay, folks. So that's basically all I wanted to cover in this particular session as well. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you have any sort of questions, then feel free to contact me regarding that as well. You already know the contact info and everything. So just feel free to reach out to me if in case you have any sort of you know questions in relation to the syllabus or in relation to the exam uh, or uh, any of the course materials that has been provided to you as well. Okay, folks. So I thank you all for attending this session and I hope to see you on one of our recorded sessions as well. Okay, folks, so this is Vishnu Jai signing off for now. Arre, wait, wait. It seems that most of you who are watching this video have not subscribed to our channel. You would miss the new videos and the updates. Subscribe now and press the bell icon.